Do you know I'm recognized as a happiness expert? I've got a thousand articles on happiness, more than 300 videos on it. Why would that be? Because I choose to live my life in happiness. Wasn't always that way, but the universe, the universe never brings you anything except to move you forward in your life. It always gives you what's in your highest and best interest. So let's go back in the beginning when I was first came into this, right? My first books on happiness. Somewhere along the line, I think it's been at least a hundred, maybe a couple hundred years, the default state, the major thought form enveloping everybody in Western society went from being, ready, went from being happy because who you are is happy. If you're not feeling it, it's because of the blocks you are creating. So think about this. If you're a man, you think 65,000 thoughts a day. I don't know how they figure this stuff out, but you'll find that in many sources. If you're a woman, remember women multitask. Men can't multitask. Oh, they think they can. But women have to because they have to take care of our home and our kids and the feeding and all these things that have to go on at the same time. So if you're a woman, that's 80,000 thoughts every day. Now, here's something you probably don't know. 95% of those thoughts, 95% of the 65,000 for men, 95% of the 80,000 for women, those thoughts are the same ones. He thought yesterday and the day before and the day before and the day before and the week before and the year before and the decade before the thing is they're happening out of your awareness they're happening in your subconscious mind technical stuff doesn't matter it doesn't make a difference the fact is if you're wondering why your world looks the same every day no matter how much you wish and you hope and you think and you envision it to be different those programs are prioritizing your day every day that's what's running you that's why my metaphysical podcast is all about the invisible forces that are running your life creating your reality because that's what they are to us. They're invisible. Now, here's the next point to realize. 80% of that huge number of automatic thoughts, 80% of them are negative. They're about something where you're not being enough, where you wish you were more, where you think what you have isn't good enough. And when your mind is going to places like that, and then you see a friend who's just manifested something that you really wanted to, only you didn't, instead of feeling happy for them, which would boost your own frequency, instead of boosting your frequency to a higher level, you have this block that gets in the way. And it's your frequency keeping you down because you have envy or jealousy or disappointment. And that's what's keeping you stuck. You see, anything and everything you want in life, it's at a certain vibration chances are at a high frequency vibration and if you're somebody who's thinking i don't have enough i am not enough why doesn't my world work your frequency is down here well if what you want up here and your frequency is down here can't happen 
You can only attract into your life things in which the frequency harmonizes with your frequency. So if you want something that's not showing up for you, you want to change the way you're thinking, which you have to do consciously because wishing doesn't work. Hoping doesn't work. I also don't like the word helping because nobody needs help. You don't help anybody. You can support them in seeing. Woo, you can support them in seeing and looking at their lives differently. But helping them is to say, I'm up here and you're down there. But that's not true. We're all at the same level. We're all doing the best we can, are we? When you ask somebody to do something for you and you get a response, I'll try. Go and ask another person because try is it's being recognized as an honorable way of saying I can't. And I can't either means I don't know how to, or more often, I don't want to. So try is my number one word on my list of words to avoid. And the next one on that list, and I have quite a few entries on that list, is I'll do my best. Well, that's another one I'm going to avoid because the best isn't the same thing as saying, I'll get it done. Because either you're going to get it done or you're not going to get it done. And to say you did your best, that's another excuse word. Now, here's another thing to consider. Are you somebody when you need to know how to do something, to learn about something, you're making a choice. Maybe where do I want to live? Do I want to move to another city, to another state? Do I want to change my job? Anything in your world where you're making a choice, how do you go about creating that final decision? Many people will go to who they know, their family, their friends, any place but to the experts. And you have to be very careful these days with the internet. There are hundreds, thousands, probably millions of people telling you they're experts, but they're not. An expert is somebody who does, who has done, who lives in whatever it is they're teaching. I wouldn't go near anybody who isn't in reality living that life. Now, what happens when you go to somebody who's not truly an expert? If you follow their advice, you have somebody to blame. If things don't go well, you'll blame them and you'll say, but that's what he told me to do. That's where she sent me. But the choice is yours. So that's another way you keep yourself stuck and there's no way you're ever going to move to a level of happiness. Now, do you realize that you cannot experience two opposing emotions simultaneously? So you can't say to the universe, I'm ready for an abundance of money, only I don't see any way that can happen. Well, you can't have both sides of that. And that's what so many people do. So many people speak affirmations. And by the way, if you want to know how to speak affirmations that work, send me a message. Because most people are teaching in a way it's not remotely possible that you're going to be able to manifest what you're asking for. So most people, and I know I started out this way and wondered why they didn't work. 
speak their affirmations, full of feelings, vision, gain your whole body involved every morning. You know, they say do that when you first wake up because that's when you have the best chance of your conscious mind being out of the way and getting directly into your subconscious. And then they say the same thing right before you fall asleep. <laughs> Here's the problem with that. What happens to the 99% of the rest of your day? You're going back into your default way of thinking, into your old programming, into all the behaviors that keep you stuck. Did you ever stop and think about the fact when somebody goes through and beats cancer, so they're clear, their doctors usually tell them, you're good, go back to the way you were living before. How does this make sense? What created the condition in the first place? It wasn't chance, it was their lifestyle. If you're going to want to make a change, you can't do something for a little while. You can't see yourself in a different life choice in the morning and at night and then go spend the rest of the day doing all the same old, same old. You know, when I work with people and after we clear things, see how many times you've gone, you've read the books. You went to the webinars, you went to the retreats, you went to the big weekend functions. He said, oh, great, I got that now. Only you don't because something's going to spark the behavior to resurface. And you're going to say, and I see this all the time in my own practice. I was so sure I was done with that. And here it is again. When you're done with something, you're done with something. Now, if you're clearing something and you're not going to all of the self-sabotage, that's normal because as humans, we want to maintain a state of homeostasis. Staying as you are, thank you very much, no changes. It's called changing back. Your family's going to want you to change that because if you come back different, they have to make a choice. They have to change to be able to function in relation to you or they can get you to change back. The change back wins most of the time because it takes conscious awareness to live in the new energy. It takes not just releasing all the self-sabotage that's programmed into you, which better be a part of any program you're doing. Otherwise, you don't even stand a remote chance of clearing it. And then actually programming something into your awareness. Awareness is who you really are. So it's not going in your body. It's not going in your mind. It's going into your awareness. And I actually program it in. And I program in the program, replace all unhealthy program cells and tissues with healthy new program cells and tissues for full and optimal functioning of this life force. I then make sure it goes into the whole brain and is seen by the whole body. So anytime in the future when I go to test to see that that program is still working in the person, it's still there. If you don't do all these steps, homeostasis will reign supreme. And you'll spend your whole life wondering why you spend all this time and all this energy and all this money and you're still stuck in the same way. Everything in life is a choice. Happiness is a choice. It's a conscious choice to remove the blocks to happiness that you 
are experiencing. Now, consider that because your default way of being, your awareness is that of true happiness, but you're putting up all these blocks in the way, you have to use extra energy to clear the blocks. So it takes more energy to get yourself to your true state of happiness. It takes more energy for you to smile when you're in the habit of frowning, which is, oh my gosh, think about it. You use hundreds of fewer muscles to smile than you do to frown. How do you feel when you smile? Right now, whatever you're doing, straighten your posture and smile and notice you feel lighter. You feel more happy energy flowing through you because it's energy at a higher frequency. It's raising you up. So a very quick way to feel better and to energize yourself is just straighten your posture and smile. When you're not in a place of feeling happy, your frequency is low and your energy is slow. Notice people who tell you they're depressed. Their posture's hunched over, they're frowning. Chances are they don't look you in the eye. It's interesting when I walk around, I'm usually smiling because uh, I've shared this before. I always admired people who smiled all the time. And then one day I said, wait a minute, I'm a person who smiles all the time. When I choose to be somebody who smiles all the time. So I smile most of the time, not because I have to think about it and do it, because it just, it's natural. It's our natural way of being. It takes less energy to do it. It feels good. And the really cool thing about it is when somebody sees you smiling, most people, they'll smile too, which will further increase your energy and theirs. Something I notice that's very interesting, there are some people when you're approaching them or they are walking or whatever kind of venue it is, and you're smiling, they don't even look at you. They totally look away. And what's that about? Somebody not wanting to connect with other people? Human beings are social animals. Connection is normal. I live in the country, and I see all the animals in my yard, all the wild animals, and they live in communities. And oh yeah, there's a hierarchy in those communities. There's a hierarchy in our human community too. However, we have the ability to think and to make choices so that when we speak up for ourselves, which you know you're gonna do if you actually love yourself, don't just say you love yourself, but actually love yourself then there's an equality. Then there's a feeling, a living in community. People who live in community are happier and they're healthier. And I'm not talking about having to live in a planned community where you share everything or share meals or share childcare. I'm just talking about some people go to some kind of spiritual group. Some people go to a church or a synagogue or a mosque so that they have a community of people who thinks like they do. I believe in thinking for yourself. I believe in coming from your heart. Okay, another key factor in choosing happiness is thinking, well, you don't wanna be thinking. 
you want to pay attention to what's going on in your heart. Start anything, any decision, any choice you want to make in your heart. And then if you want to give it details, then you move it up to your mind. But you want to start in your heart. Do you know that your body sends five times as many messages from your heart to your brain as from your brain to your heart? Five times as many messages go from your heart to your brain. What does that tell you? Your default way of living is from your heart in true happiness. I thank you very much for joining me here today. And remember, happiness is a choice. You make it in every moment. Remember to enjoy. That's I-N, capital J-O-Y, every moment. Because when it happens out there, you don't see out there. It comes inside. It's processed in your brain. You don't hear anything outside of you. You don't touch, taste, or smell anything outside of you. It all happens within. Go ahead and contact me. Send me a message if you'd like to connect with me. I'd love to connect with you because connection is who we are as humans. I think it's who we are as mammals, as animals. I certainly I see it in the fish, in the deer, in the foxes, in the turkeys. I love that mama who comes with her 11 little ones. And they're so cute the way they get in line and they chase and follow. And they don't have the same kind of brains we have. But they do know community. I'll see you next time.